Hi there. Do you want to get fit and improve your English at the same time? It's a dual purpose podcast today on how to decrease stress, increase your fitness, all with a simple solution. Let's discuss how incorporating running into your routine can offer you immense health benefits and a fantastic opportunity to practice your English listening at the same time. More people than ever are being converted to running. That's running from the verb to run, R-U-N. Running is one of the most efficient, cost-effective exercises you can do. All you need is a pair of these. In these times when the cost of living is high, people can't necessarily afford expensive gyms. That's G-Y-M-S. And running is low cost. So immense benefits, physical and psychological. And I'm going to discuss what type of running is best. How many hours a week do you need to spend doing it? Not many is the answer. And if you don't like running, then this podcast is definitely for you. I talk about how to make running more enjoyable. And stay with me till the end of this podcast. I've got lots of tips on making running enjoyable, but also hear about how I think of myself as a dog when I go out for a run. That's worth waiting for, surely. Don't forget, listen several times to this podcast. It's good for your English language learning. Hello, I'm Hilary and you're listening to Adept English. We will help you to speak English fluently. All you have to do is listen. So start listening now and find out how it works. And if you want to help out Adept English, then please share us on Spotify. That's where our biggest audience is. But in order to carry on, Adept English needs more listeners. We don't advertise, we're not big business. And often the way that people find out about us is what we call word of mouth. People tell one another about Adept English. And people often say to us, I'm really glad I found Adept English, but why don't you have more listeners? Sometimes it's like we're a closely guarded secret. Once people have found us, they tend to stick with us. But we don't really want to be a closely guarded secret anymore. We'd like to reach more people than we currently do. We'd like to have more listeners. So please help us out by telling people about the Adept English and by sharing our podcast on Spotify. That share function, it helps us with the algorithm too. And the more people see our podcast, the more people become Adept English listeners. Thank you for doing that. Now, imagine this, you're stepping out of your house in the crisp morning air, ready to conquer the day. All you need is a pair of good running shoes and a few minutes to spare. That's the beauty of running. It's straightforward, inexpensive and incredibly beneficial for both your body and your mind. Most people can run from home. You just go out through the front door and you start. There's no drive to the gym. You don't need anybody else. You can just go when you're ready and you can run at your own pace. And if you run in a certain way, it doesn't need to take up that much of your time. Running benefits your fitness massively. It can speed up your metabolic rate. That means the rate at which you burn your food. It can also bring down your heart rate and your blood pressure. It may even help you improve your blood sugar levels and insulin sensitivity. Keep diabetes at bay but it particularly helps you with your weight. As I've spoken about in podcasts before, it's out of date to think that being overweight is about eating too much fat. It's about too much carbohydrate. So running is one way, as well as cutting your carb, to increase your level of fitness and benefit your overall health. There are psychological benefits. I say about my running, I come back with a different head. What I mean by this, if I'm stressed or more often preoccupied, that's P-R-E-O-C-C-U-P-I-E-D. And that just means I've got lots on my mind, lots of things to think about. But the action of running seems to take this all away. It may be because I'm out of breath and sweating. I've got other things to focus on, but it works. I come back with a different head. But what's that I hear you say? 
you don't like running? Well, some people just don't like that sensation of being out of breath. And many people don't like the idea of spending hours each week training for a race, especially a marathon. That's M-A-R-A-T-H-O-N. Lots of people don't find this an interesting way to spend their time and aren't interested in running competitively. Me neither. But I read an article this week in the magazine Marie Claire called I used to hate running, but this type of training has helped me run my first half marathon sub 1.30. She means in less than an hour and a half. The person writing that article puts her success and her enjoyment of running down to what she calls speed work. That's a made up word. But what this writer means is short, sharp bursts of running. The verb used in English often is to sprint. That's S-P-R-I-N-T, to run fast. So short, intense bursts of sprinting to raise your heart rate and where you run at 80 to 90 percent of your capacity. And then in between, you walk more slowly or you run slowly. You recover and then you sprint again. This is often called high intensity interval training, H-I-I-T. Intensity means it's intense. It's more extreme. It demands a lot of energy if it's high intensity. And an interval, I-N-T-E-R-V-A-L, that just means a gap or a pause. So nothing fancy here in H-I-I-T. You run as fast as you can. You slow down and you walk or run slowly. When you've got your breath back, you run as fast as you can. Short, sharp bursts of running. HIIT training is supposed to be safe for people of any age. The only concern might be if you have a heart condition. And it's not the speed you go, it's how much effort you put in, only in short bursts. I like it when things are measured on effort. That pleases me. Now, I have no interest in running marathons or half marathons or competitive running of any kind. I'm doing it purely for my physical fitness and for the benefits it brings mentally. I just want to get as fit as I can while using up the minimum amount of time possible in my week. So whether you call this speed work or high intensity interval training, it's the method of running which delivers for most people and which is growing in popularity. After reading that Marie Claire article, I did a quick Google search on I used to hate running, but interesting results. And I include some links in the transcripts to these articles I used to hate running, but many of them mentioned HIIT training as a solution. But there are lots of other good recommendations, like saving your favourite music or your favourite podcasts solely for when you run giving yourself something to look forward to. Of course, for you, that might be the Adept English podcast. But whatever you enjoy, save it for your run as an incentive to give you motivation. Such a good idea. One I used to hate running but writer spoke about how much more enjoyable she finds it running outdoors rather than on a treadmill in a gym. Here's your more difficult piece of English to practice with today. Jenna Ryu says, There's something invigorating about soaking in the vibrant colours of the sky on a sunny morning while exploring the city around me. Of course, I get it if no such idyllic path exists in your area. But I found that no matter where I am, paying attention to even the simple things, leaves rustling in the wind, people walking their dogs, a crisp breeze on my face helps turn running into an immersive and peaceful experience. And not just a workout to check off my to-do list. And I agree with her. One of the things I like about running, I notice nature. I notice changes in the local area. I'm much more aware of the weather, the temperature, whether there's a lovely sunset or it's pouring down or really windy. I actually love running in bad weather. And if it's cold, I wear gloves. But I smell the air. 
And when I run, I feel rather like a dog who likes to go on a regular walk to smell the smells and patrol the area. If you run, you notice things you wouldn't otherwise see. Oh, that person's done their garden. Oh, there's that dog walker again. Or, oh, look, on the grass verge, the bluebells are flowering and the leaves are coming onto the trees. It helps me feel connected with my local environment and it helps me feel more connected with the weather and nature, all potentially while improving my insulin sensitivity. What could be better than that? Don't forget to share us. Don't forget to listen a number of times to benefit your English. Enough for now. Have a lovely day. Speak to you again soon. Goodbye. Thank you so much for listening. Please help me tell others about this podcast by reviewing or rating it. And please share it on social media. You can find more listening lessons and a free English course at adeptenglish.com. 